The Helium Hotspot Opportunity. If you enjoy this content, please like and subscribe for more. According to Crunchbase, Helium was founded in 2013 by Amir Halim, Sean Carey, and Sean Fanning. And as we know, Sean Fanning is one of the co-founders of the popular file sharing network, Napster, along with Sean Parker. According to a Forbes article from October 2015, Helium was initially a platform for putting sensors in businesses. And we can see this in a screenshot from the Wayback Machine in 2016. But the number one problem Helium probably faced was incentives. Sure, the devices could be useful to businesses, but without a strong network like big telco companies, why would businesses switch to Helium? Helium needed to create strong incentives for others to buy the devices since it would be insanely expensive to fund this themselves. And that's what Helium did. They came up with a new plan forward. In 2019, Helium created the world's first peer-to-peer -peer wireless network. Not just any wireless network. It's a network of devices for the Internet of Things. Helium sells these boxes that look like Wi-Fi routers. And when you buy one of these boxes, it allows you to earn a new cryptocurrency called Helium. Helium has two types of medium of exchange, the Helium token and data credits. Helium tokens are mined and distributed to hotspot owners, Helium the company, and investors. From this chart, you can see that Helium tokens are distributed less to investors over time and more towards hotspot owners who provide network data transfers. This is important as the network of Helium hotspots continues to grow throughout the world. So where are the tokens earned? With your hotspot device, you get paid for completing five different tasks in the network. The first is by being a challenger. Hotspots are chosen by the network to issue challenges over the internet to a target group of hotspots. The second is proof of coverage, which validates their peers wireless coverage. The amount of each hotspot earns depends on how often it is directly involved. The third way is by being a witness. Hotspots that monitor and report proof of coverage activity of other hotspots receive a portion of helium depending upon how much activity they've witnessed. The fourth is by network data transfers. And this amount is allocated based upon how much data is, you know, each hotspot transfers. The last is consensus groups. The highest scoring hotspots are elected to consensus groups to perform tasks, including validating transactions and publishing new blocks. Now, if you remember from earlier, Helium also has data credits. Data credits are the only payment accepted to send data over the Helium network. Data credits are fixed in US dollars. To get them, network users convert Helium or get them from a Helium owner. Any helium converted to data credits is permanently burned from the circulating supply. In theory, this should make the value of HNT go up. Now let's talk about technology. Helium uses LongFi combined with LoRaWAN wireless protocol and the Helium blockchain so any LoRaWAN device can transfer data on the Helium network. That was a mouthful, so let's break it down. LongFi allows a company to onboard as many devices as they need, providing frictionless onboarding. You also get device roaming, micropayment transactions, and low raw WAN support. Speaking of low raw, let's compare it to the familiar alternatives Wi-Fi and Cellular. Wi-Fi provides high bandwidth over a mostly short range. Cellular provides high bandwidth over a long range. However, it uses the most power out of any option. LoRa provides the longest range with high bandwidth and the lowest power and lowest cost. And we can see this on Helium's LongFi chart. LongFi reaches over 10 plus miles, whereas Wi-Fi only gets about 300 feet and Bluetooth only about 30 feet. On the business section of Helium's website, you can see they compare their Helium network solution to AT&T, Verizon, and T-Mobile. And that's because that's what Helium's really doing. They're competing against the big telco companies with a better solution, the People's Network. 
So what about power consumption? If you compare Helium to other cryptocurrency mining devices, it becomes very obvious that Helium has an advantage. Helium hotspots only use about 5 watts of energy or about 75 cents per month. If you compare that to the CoinMine cryptocurrency mining device, it uses 160 watts of power or $24 per month. That's a huge difference. Now let's go over businesses using Helium. Salesforce uses Helium to onboard new employees by using their badge to swipe resources. This frictionless experience is a big deal for Salesforce. Another business that uses Helium is Nestle. Nestle works with Helium to get real-time view of the fill levels of their water coolers, extending the level of service they can offer their customers. Line provides scooters and bikes to help people get around through the last mile. With Helium, they no longer have to rely on the power-hungry GPS devices to track their micro-mobility solutions. Instead, they can use Helium and make more money by saving more energy. And this is also similar to InvisiLeash, which pr provides pet location monitoring. Very similar to Lime, InvisiLeash can save money by avoiding using GPS and using something more energy efficient like Helium. Last but not least is Agulus, which uses Helium to automate irrigation valves, pumps, and sprayers. There's more companies listed on their website. With all these companies using Helium and purchasing these devices, that means Helium is continuing to grow. And this year they announced their expansion into Canada, Europe, and Asia, which shows strong signs of growth. The team also recently announced Tabs, a new device you can purchase. Helium tabs are similar to Bluetooth and cell-based trackers, except they last over six months, don't require a smartphone to locate them, and they can go up to eight miles compared to the two miles and 30 feet alternatives. So, should you buy a Helium hotspot? Well, of course I think you should, but as you know, this isn't financial advice. But let's dive into why I think that is. Based on the earnings I've got using the Helium hotspot over the past six months, I'm definitely in a profit. Since then, Helium has changed the amount of rewards they pay out. At one point, I was earning about 300 HNT per week. Now I'm averaging about 50 to 100 HNT per week, but it really depends on your area. Again, this isn't financial advice, but I still see Helium as a great opportunity, especially if you live in a bigger metropolitan area you're more likely to connect with other devices um, and earn HNT. Let's go over some tips before I wrap up this video. The Helium token isn't traded on exchanges yet, but you can join this OTC group. As you can see, the price has been floating between 35 cents and 40 cents, and the share link to join the group is on the right. Personally, I would wait until HNT ends up on exchanges. This Telegram group is useful if you want to track what your break-even cost is for purchasing the device. When you buy a Helium hotspot, you get a 1.2 dBi antenna. I recommend upgrading to a 6 to 10 dBi antenna. It's not that expensive on Amazon, and you may see higher challenge and witness acceptance rates like I have. Now, I know this tip seems like an obvious one, but it's not. I've fiddled with the Helium hotspot for over half a year now, and I found when you put the antenna almost touching the window, you get better results than if you place it farther away. This may be more specific for my circumstance because I live in an area where there's many trees and buildings, but I suspect that it also applies to others. Now, if you own your own home, you can also put an antenna on the roof, but this requires more effort. On Helium's forums, you can see what several members did, and they have several suggestions on how you can set that up and make it work. Well, that's it. Uh, thank you so much for watching this video on the Helium opportunity. If you enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe for more. 
and I'll see you in the next one.